All right, so I wasn't going to do a part two to my video on my theory on what causes Parkinson's, but there were some questions and I have a little bit more to say, so here we go. So, as you may recall, what I had said was that Parkinson's is caused by an overworked and utterly exhausted brain. It really comes down to a state of mind, and if you don't believe that, check this out. So here's a map that shows the overall life satisfaction by state in the United States. The most happiest people are in the darker blue, and the least happy people in America are in the lighter blue. Now, if we take a circle and draw around the biggest region of the happiest people, it would look like this. And if we took a circle and drew it around the largest section of America that is unhappy, it would look like this. Now, if we change the map to this one, the happiest people are mostly in the green and the most unhappy people are largely in the blues and purples. And then we realize that the blues and the purples are where the highest concentrations of Parkinson's cases are per 100,000 people in America. Okay, so correlation doesn't equal causation, but at some point you need data to help prove and build a case, and it supports what I've been saying all along as my theory of what causes Parkinson's in the first place. Now, the hardest part about all this is explaining to people what it feels like when you are releasing the pressure that's been building up in your head. And before I was diagnosed, I was trying stuff because I knew I just wasn't right. What I, I tried meditation, and instead of purging pressure from my head and relaxing, I just kind of sat there motionless for a minute or two and didn't really come out of it different afterwards than I did going into it. I just kind of sat there for a little bit. That's because clearing your mind and releasing the pressure is more than just a passive meditation like I stated in my previous video. It's more of a purge of the pressure to start with that eases into a relaxation after that. This is what I've done that I found to be most beneficial. So if you're not feeling the strong sense of relief in your mind, that kind of washes over you mentally, keep practicing and keep playing around with it. When I do it, I, I, I'm not thinking about inhaling in my lungs. I'm not thinking about exhaling out my nose. What I'm thinking about is I draw focus to my mind and I kind of push air up into my mind and let it swirl around in there. And as weird as that sounds, when it happens, you'll feel it and it's a very calming effect. And this is something that I think that you should try and again, play around with and see how it feels because getting to this is crucially important to relieving the pressure and getting the brain to start functioning properly again from all the cortisol that likely is built up. And I firmly believe that if you change the person, you stop the disease. Now, does this mean that if you relax and change your mental state that you're gonna be rid of all your Parkinson's? Unfortunately, that's not really how the nervous system works. Now, if you get a small cut on your skin, it'll take a week or two, but it'll heal. If you pull a muscle, it'll work it out and it'll get better again. Even if you break a bone and it may take months, it'll heal and it'll go back to how it was. Now, with the nervous system, the best we can hope for is that all those bad days that you have, those are behind you. And the good days that you have become the new normal. When I started doing this, and I stated this in my previous videos, that after a day, I felt better and I had more dexterity. After a couple of days, I got more strength and I was able to stand and have better balance. And I got better for about a month here and there and all over. And that's what I hope for you, that your progression stops, you get a sense of recovery just a little bit, and that your best days are ahead of you. Take care.